Hello guys, welcome to a very special episode of uh, Fixing Warcry. Today I am here with Anna and Alan from Red Rose Wargaming, a channel you will probably already know, and I'm linking it down in the video below as well. Go check them out, say hello guys. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. It is a pleasure to be here. It's always it nice is. to chat to you. Yeah, we chat. Obviously, we chat to you on the uh, the typey thing, but uh, this is the first time we've actually spoke to you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice, nice to actually speak to somebody, isn't it? As opposed to tapping away on a. It is very exciting. I'm very happy to talk to you guys. Um, you kind of inspired me to uh, to get my own channel going and talk about Warcry, uh, not only to myself but also other people. And um, yeah, so today we want to talk about the Nurgle Rotbring. This is um, what I yes. kind of uh, asked you guys to come in for. Because I know you guys have done um, in-depth card reviews of the Nogorod Brings, of course. You've done a video on that and you've played them as well. There was recently, your most recent battle report was with Rod Bringers. Mm. Um, so I know you guys have a lot of opinions, probably. And, uh, One or two, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, let's talk about them. Uh, now, like, just first off, maybe in general, what would you guys consider most important things for a Warcry Warband in general? Because I personally often talk about movement and de high damage output. Is that what you would consider good Warbands as well? A fast Warband is definitely up there, isn't it? I, I, I think more, more, you see, resilience doesn't really work in this, does it? Because obviously, regardless of how tough you are, the worst you're ever going to get to hit is a five, isn't it? Exactly, I so agree. So it's obviously the strength side. The strength side of it is more important than the toughness side. If that makes sense, I think. I don't know. It's it's an eternal discussion. Yeah, this? yeah, I yeah. We have, we have this discussion <laughs> every week. I um uh, I think there's so many variables that I think like Warcry doesn't perhaps get the acknowledgement it deserves for the. I don't think there's one way to build a warband which can win every single. Um. No, I mean, it yes, on you're right. It, you have very few stats, but you're right. It's definitely more in depth than uh, some people think. Um, yeah, there's definitely no one warband. thing to to win. Yeah, you could build a warband all about speed, but then you might have a thing which is you know you've got to kill all your opponents, and eventually you're going to have to come to people. And if you if you tend to have speed, you don't tend to be as resilient. Mm. If you look, I mean, we did a, a review on the Daughters of Cain, the Kinnerai. Flyers and they've got a lot of speed, but they've just got no. All oh, the wounds are. Yes, wounds. yes, I, I've seen that, and I agree fully with you there. About that in the future, can't we? Yeah, yeah, we could. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, back to Nurgle. Um, yes. So when I'm looking at them, um, I see they do very bad damage on average for their points value. That is, like I'm, I like to uh, to look at guys, um, see how their damage output is, and then divided by the point value, basically very rudimentally, uh, to see like how good do they do for damage. And, and they are not cheap models, are they? All of them are above the 100 points mark. They all do pretty bad damage, or like average damage, but at high point costs. They are very survivable, of course, but then they are slow as well. Uh, so that's what I think are the biggest issues. What do you guys think? Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Because a hundred for a, a basic champ, you've got one hundred and thirty-five points, and he's only got toughness four. Again, movement three. That it, it, it's not, and you and you're only throwing out a two four damage, aren't you? So it's. A, it's interesting that you say he's points. only toughness four because when I look only, at yeah, them, I'm, I'm still, yeah, I'm still a little bit um, sore about that because you get a lot of the other war bands. Yeah. And. As soon as you give a shield to a, a member of that warband, it knocks his toughness up by one. It's true. It's true. Well, these guys, these guys are supposed to be, you know, the most resilient of the chaos warbands, but they still only have a toughness for even with a shield, and I feel that's a little harsh. And I have, I have said that once or twice. Yeah, just once or twice. Just once or twice again. So I, I, I don't know. It's, I mean, but... don't get me wrong. Toughness four is brilliant because obviously we. Unfortunately, most people look at the warbands and they look at them. They don't look at the actual basic warbands, do they? You know, your, your cipher lords and such. Yeah. And toughness four is, is, is quite good for you know for the for the basic warbands. 
Indeed, and you'll play a lot against those as well. Like, yes. There's a lot yeah. of people around playing those just the basic Warcry Warbirds. There are. Um, I mean, I, I obviously, people know that I, I play um, Iron Golems, and I play them straight out of the box. Yeah. And that's that's my favourite Warband. But they're not particularly... Go, but again, we're, we're, we're going off topic, really. We're nerdy, aren't we? But they're not particularly high um, toughness. I high think it's very high. interesting that you... That you that you complain about the toughness four versus toughness five, I agree with you partly, but you said it yourself. Toughness isn't that important. No. And when I look at the values, um, like from my tier list that I did, um, Nurgle is actually in third place of the most toughest warband. No, is it even first place? It's first place. It's the toughest warband in the game. So. Really. Yes. Because they're all running at toughness 4. It's because they are all 25 wounds. 100, uh, wounds and 130 yeah, yeah. points is incredibly cheap for 25 wounds. Is it even? It's 25, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 25. Yeah, yeah. I suppose 25 wounds is quite. Because yeah, that's again, something. It makes it really uh, resilient that side, doesn't it? Exactly. So, yes, you might think a toughness 4 is pretty low, but they are already point for point, they are the most tough models in the game. So. I think the toughness is really not the issue for these guys. I think it's the slow movement and the low damage output, if you ask. Me. Yeah, slow movement is definitely one, definitely mm. one for this. I mean, th that last game we played, it was, I, w I was bitching about them all the time when it bought. They actually pr played really well, oh, and they, yeah. again, survivability. They, you it was only the big, big thing destroying things, wasn't it? Yeah, you hammered my silverness to be honest. I, for me, the the major downside with Nagel. And I, I think when you, if you go back to your first question, the most valuable characteristic is dice for me. It's the first thing I look at, how many mm -hmm. dice are you throwing? Because in Warcry, with six always being a guaranteed crit, you're always going to have a one in six chance of hitting, no matter how tough. And if you throw enough dice, it's, it's crit fishing, isn't it? And unfortunately, a lot of the Nagel warriors don't tend to throw a lot of dice. And like you, yes. And like you said, even when they do, they don't do amazing damage. But like you know, when you compare them to like Skaven Stormfeed and hitting, doing eight on a crit and things like that, and throwing five or six dice. Yeah. There's a massive there's difference. No there, comparison, so. indeed. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. I, I was very shocked when I saw that they only throw three dice. I think they should have have at least four. Um, yeah. So looking at it here. The average Blight Lord attack, uh, sorry, Blight King attack, deals four damage. So, when you throw those three dice against Toughness Four, you on average do four damage per per action. That is pretty yeah. low for a model that costs it's 135 not, not points. Good, really? No, that's not great. Like, I, like the worst case would be a Blight King fighting a Blight King. They would just never kill the, the, each other, especially with the Warcry game only taking three turns in many cases, right? No. Well, see, that's the other problem, isn't it? If you go, if you if you take the like we've been to a tournament at Warhammer World, don't we? Like if you take them down to a tournament and you only got three rounds or four rounds at most, and then you need to spend maybe two turns of Nurgle actually getting them into combat because yeah. they're so slow. Yeah. Then you've only got one or two rounds to kill something. You're not going to do enough damage to kill it. Fully so... agree. Fully agree. Um, so I think. We're on the kind of the same page as in, in terms of like what their issues are. Um, yes. Now the real question is how would you fix them? I think that's that's the breaking point. Um, mm. yeah. I think you could do um, the the, ma the easiest way to fix them would be um, a universal double simul to charge, just to yeah. give them some speed. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Of. Basically, instead of the um, of the one that does damage, right? Yes. So if we had like a charge, like a free move. Yeah, I I agree. That would help them massively. Just getting into combat and being where they need you could to even be. Do it thematically, like um, a, a virulent charge. So you charge, and if you pass within a certain inch of something, you leave behind like a trail of slime or sludge or whatever, or, which does a damage to anyone you pass something mm. like that or yeah like deal one damage to an enemy you end up, up next to or something like that. yeah 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 it's, i mean if you look at the if you look at the abilities none of the abilities speed the the guys up either do they only the uh, the bell shame, does really. the bell adds one to all just movement the bell, yeah, six yeah. Inches. have you 
I'm curious, have you wrote a list for these? I have. Um, let me... I, think it's diff I find it difficult to write a list for them. It is very difficult because they have no cheap models, so it's impossible no. to have a big variation. So what I did with my list was getting one Blight Lord, so the leader, obviously. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, the uh, the uh, the Blight Lord is the flying guy. One of the flying guys. Right, you went for him, did you? Um, then the Blight King, of uh, only one of those. The leader, two bells, and one banner. Going right. with that set up, you only have six fighters, which is not a lot, which is what I don't like about them as well. Um, but you can have the the fly being in one battle group, uh, her dag either dagger or hammer, one of the ones which come on like later most of the time. Um, so you will have a chance of even getting him into fights. And then to the two other groups, I would put one bell. So at least we can you can get up to movement four for a double instead of being stuck at movement three. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I, you do always have rush, don't you? As a... You do have rush, yeah. yeah you do that's, have that's rush. Really interesting little list, is that? But at least you can basically add both on top of each other. So say you have three doubles, you could ring the bell and then use another for another fighter. You could still spend a double on yeah. rush and you'd be moving five. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think, it I think opens a like few more ways to be quicker. Yes. Yeah, you see... And actually, like, I looked at the bell and thought, oh, the damage is worse as well. But uh, as a matter of fact, the damage is, on average, the exact same uh, as the damage for a normal Blight King. Yeah, because you, you, you're throwing more dice, aren't you? Exactly. You're throwing more With dice, four you dice, dice range as well. It's actually, um, it's actually the same, well. same damage on average. So, yeah, yeah I think yeah. bringing bells is important, but uh, the, the issue really is that yeah, they are also expensive. Everything's expensive, right? Yes. And I think that's something we haven't talked about yet as much, but there's also activation wars going on in Warcry, clearly. Um, whoever has more models, has more activations, They can you can react to what the other guy does instead of being the one to move into combat and then being hurt, you can be the one to move in afterwards and so on. So having more models obviously has great value as well, and that's something... Noble also doesn't get. Yeah, uh, I um I played a game. It wasn't on camera, but my friend's got a friend Corey. He's got a Seraphon army, and I took my Sack Lords against him. I made a sort of um a heavier hitting, less numbers Sack Lords. Only about six or seven models. Right. I got completely out activated, and obviously the Seraphon range on the Skinks is insane. Yeah. And I'd be interested to see how Seraphon would do against. Nurgle. Nurgle, I think they'd absolutely hammer him. Do you think, think Seraphon and Nurgle? I'm a Nurgle? Yeah. Because they've got so many models. Oh, and they roll a few dice as well. Don't rolling they? dice, Again, we're, we're but off. hitting on a uh, crit four. Yeah, yeah. And I think they move five or six, maybe? I can't remember. Yeah. But you're never going to get close enough to you, you can't. You can't catch them. Um, no. I, I think uh, Seraphon are probably uh, like a skinkless, like that is probably going to struggle to kill many of the Nurgles. Just because twenty-five wounds is a lot of lot to chew through. Um, yeah. But many objectives aren't about killing, right? I, I mean, exactly. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, I've got I've got it here. Um, I've looked at that. Um, let's see, victory conditions. Here we go. Uh, so I identified seven as just fighting objectives, and then seven more as fighting that also require a lot of movement, like catching one specific enemy fighter and so on. So let's say out of the uh, 32 victory cards there are, 14 might be about fighting. And the others are just holding objectives, running away with the treasure and so on. And that's where Nurgle's really going to struggle. Yes, definitely. I mean, you, you can also look at tying people up, can't you? Because if you've got like, again, go back, going back to the skink list, you can obviously just tie people up with chaff models can't you for a turn it, yeah and because of the nurgle low damage are you going to be able to plow through whereas if you had a hard hitting model like oh i don't know pick one um you can sort of kill a skink move on to the next one yeah, whereas yeah. are these going to be able to get through them in the activations i, I think they'd struggle i'd be interested to see that I think we need to yeah that's a through. good point i've just uh, checked in my uh table so if if i was assuming toughness 2 as the opponent i think that's what the skinks are 
Um, the normal Blight King will only do 5 damage on an activation against that, so that's not enough to kill a Skink in one go, you're right. That is tough, that is really tough because that will yeah. slow you down so much. And again, it's all it's, it's the activation game as well, isn't it? Because you, your opponent's just going to out activate you. If you've only got six models in your, your warband... Yeah, the other guy's it. going to wait with a couple of skinks. You have to move yes. in because you don't have any ranged. And then they can still fight you when you are already done activating, right? Yeah. And again, if you, if you look at then contesting objectives, you could send in a couple of skinks and know that he's not going to be able to kill enough to actually win the objective because he's just going to tie, get tied up. Yeah. So something I was thinking that possibly could make Nurgle a lot better would be if they had a cheap, mo cheap model. Um, yes. well, that's just like a, something a I found for many, is they need something cheap to allow you to have those activations, to allow you to maybe to have more uh, just m mobility on the, on the field, because you need to grab those objectives and so on. Yeah. So I agree. To me, what, what, an option would, would be maybe adding one a Marauder or something, like one of the Slaves to Darkness guys, just a yeah. cheap Marauder, um, paint him green, say he's a Nurgle Marauder, whatever. <laughs> um, I think that might help them a lot, having a one, like, 75-point model in there. It would make list building so much more interesting because you'd actually have choice. Um, like, you've tried to play a a big list, and that was seven fighters, wasn't it? Yes. Um, yes. But that was that was just your, your Black King leader and, and six normal Black Kings. Exactly, and that's... Sorry, but seven models is garbage compared to... Yes. ...what some of the others can do. Like, uh, Skaven, they can, they can easily bring 12, 15 models if they want to. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so, well, yeah, yeah, I think... I think, I think I think you're, you're right there with the, having a Marauder because I think that's I think that's what they're missing in in I mean I, I, we play a little bit of Age of Sigmar but I think that's what they're missing in Age of Sigmar is some Nurgle Marauders you know yeah. and, and they're definitely missing it they're missing it in this yeah but, I mean they could do they could do something like maybe zombies or something you know some plague zombies perhaps something like yeah that. in Blood Bowl there's Rotters thank you oh yes yes yeah. that's basically Nurgle yes. zombies in a way. Yeah, so I, I think that'd be, I mean, and again, it'd be cheap mo cheap models to fill out the list. Yeah, I think that could be interesting. But so far, like uh, in these um, in these scenarios, I've tried to in these videos, I've tried to think about what how could it be done with existing models, but there are yeah. none for Nurgle, are there? Like, no, that's the issue. Like. Maybe they should not have split um, the Nurgle models and demons. Maybe they should put them back together. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, it was a bit of a strange on that, wasn't it? Because obviously, when when we opened the cards, you, you're not getting a lot of cards in the pack. So you know, we thought maybe having a demon mortal, you know, pack would be the way forward. Yeah. Again, because you, you, you're covering every base, here, aren't you? And I think the Nurgle demons are a lot more competitive than the mortals are, for sure. Yeah, and they're a lot more fun as well. I love, I love the Nurgle demons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like Nurgle, I've got a, a thing for Nurgle. Indeed. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, so what do you guys, know. like, in general, think about um, changing cards, changing values on, on units? Um, I'm a bit on the fence because obviously people have bought the cards and if you're changing values, um, yeah, you can basically throw the, the cards in the garbage can. Um, so how's your opinion on that? Well, th my my thing is, obviously, I think because because they are only, only cards, there's, there's nothing stopping them. I mean, if this was done in, say, like some codex or whatever, if you changed it, you're talking twenty, thirty pounds to to bring it, you know, to to update the the army list, aren't you? Where yeah. if you're changing cards, you're you, you're charging, I don't know, five five pounds. Yeah. Uh, might be, a yeah. Pack. Yeah, I, five pounds for a pack. See, what I I just obviously leave these cards. I think I do um, a set of physical expansion cards, oh, and maybe yeah. just yeah, maybe yeah. one or two cards for each. And, and I'm surprised GW haven't done this because if you look at something like um, Shadespire, they tend to do 
release a warband with this with their own cards and then release the universals as well yes so a lot of people have to buy that pack to get some of the universals they need now they could do like a a, a season expansion so say this is wave three they could do a wave three expansion with just an extra one or two cards for each warband yeah i mean some of the warbands don't need it do they some of the warbands don't need it no but the problem we've got with this particular warband is there isn't anything to add to them well, yeah, I think that's yeah. really the main issue. You can't add any yeah. more models because they don't have any. Mm. And I don't it's really see Games Workshop adding more Nurgle models at the moment, at least. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. It's a shame, really. But then you come through, like, it could be the Monsters and Mechs. Second yeah, pack. that is true. I don't know why they didn't release them in physical. Um, because I think they are a good way to bolster a universal and I think it, that is probably what GW are thinking in the fact that people will buy the monsters and mercs to expand a couple of things yes and it's just whether if you went to a tournament people will allow them I remember like when we oh, went, you, they you weren't allowed them. yeah you weren't you weren't allowed mercs. yeah and uh, keep in mind you can only ever bring one mercenary exactly yeah. um, all the chaos mercenaries are very expensive um, so I don't think Mercenaries are, they are very good for some factions, but I don't think they are going to fix Nurgle's problems. Not no, the ones not, we have no. right now. But, because I mean, they don't improve the movement greatly, I think. I don't think there's a Chaos one that does that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they bring... No, I think the Nurgle ones Nurgle. are quite useless. Yes, I agree. Yeah, they, um, don't, they don't bring enough to the... To the game really do yeah i think the dark earth war queen is probably one of the best ones for chaos yeah, let me just, uh, let's get back to that. um she's also uh, she must be on the uh slaves of darkness 95 points of year because uh, of her ability basically yeah but that's what your bell's got isn't it is it only one inch move it's mm. just one yeah oh yeah, still, okay i'm sorry that... i thought it's a shame really it's not with the number on the dice because that would no. be a nice one wouldn't it i mean honestly if you change the bell ability to be a triple but number of on dice that would yes. be yeah that would be that might be yeah. a very strong change now yes. that come to think about it so say that double was a triple and that was value of dice so that would be a war basically the war ability hmm. for Yes. Uh, for green it's not, I don't think it's a game breaker, is that, is it? Doing that. Because let's face it, you have... Using a triple is quite a... You know, quite an expensive thing to do anyway. Yeah, I, I normally say you're not using more than one triple in a, a, a turn. Right. In a turn, no. No, so I, I don't think it... I think, in fact, that's, that's a very good idea, is that? Turn it to a triple and, and move. And then, what would you do about the icon bearer? Because... From my perspective, the icon bearer is completely useless. You might not as well as well not have him at all in the game. It's very similar to the we had, we had this chat about the stormcast, didn't we? Uh, we the, did. Yes, you don't need to add, 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 add toughness to a add very to tough why? warband. Yeah. Why would you? Yeah, why would you add it to a, a tough model already? And that's a triple as well. You, who spends a triple to give one toughness to your no. to yeah, your fighters? It's not, it's, it's sure. not worth it, and I don't think it's very, I don't think it's very thematic, really, for the for the Nurgle that. Not I'm sure, either. I'm sure they could have thought of something better, couldn't they? Yeah, it's it's tough. It's really tough. Like, uh, can we think of something better? Yeah, I mean, but you could even reverse them too, couldn't you, and have it on a double? Yeah, you could have that on a double. It's true. That would yeah. make it a bit better. So, so yeah, if you, if you reversed that, yeah, if you reversed the sonorous toxin and the blighted icon round. And made the toxin triple value and just put that as that is true it. that is true that would be that. much better and then i, I think with... the uh, the leader triple is also worse than many than what most of the others have adding one strength it's not horrible but many other warbands have add one attack and uh, i guarantee you that one attack is always going to amount to more damage than adding one strength yes yeah, I agree. Like I say, it's it's the fishing for crits thing, isn't it? If you if you roll the more dice, you more obviously you're more likely to roll. Yeah. Roll, you know, roll. And your this crits. game is all about crits. 
Of course it is, yeah, yeah. Regardless of what people say, it is all about crits. Yeah. But that's, I don't know, it's, I mean, I used it in the last game, didn't I? And it wasn't bad because I had a few people around him. True, but then again, um, against all these smaller Sylvanet models, you didn't need it. Yeah. Because they are no. already lower toughness than your strength. Exactly. So you, um, you, 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 can't, you can't get any better than a three anyway. So, it's, so and, and only relevant. throwing three dice for one Blight King, you're going to be lucky if one of those is, is going to be affected by the plus strength thing. And even like... Yes. I don't know. I, I didn't count, but maybe I should have during your video how many extra hits you actually got from that. Probably not very, very many at all. No, I think I only used it on the big... Oh, yeah, McKernoth, didn't you? McKernoth. I only used it with, against the Kernoth Hunters, I think. Yeah. I, um... But if you compare it to, like, High Tide for the Idunus, where they get plus one strength, but they also get the plus one attack... Yeah, so much better. That... Again, it's, again, it's that attack, isn't it? That's what turns one of... It, I think that's what turns High Tide into one of the best abilities. Yeah, but obviously that's obviously the... tied to turn three. Yes, that's what I was going to say. That's the caveat, isn't it? That you've got a restriction on that. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But, but like, go for Corvus Cabal, for example. They have a just a flat add one attack to all guys within six inch. Yes. No ties, no nothing. So much no, better than uh... one strength, if you ask me. Yes, definitely. Yeah, if it changed that to one, add one attack, but I think it'd, it'd make it better. So if you wanted to do this, honestly, I would say add five to strength. Like, if they don't want to do more attacks. Because... I mean, five sounds ridiculous, but really what it's doing is you guarantee hitting on threes. Yeah. And I think if you are going to do this, then at least guarantee hitting on threes, even against maybe a toughness five warband like uh, uh, Stormcast. So maybe yeah, then it that, could be okay. I think that it's, makes it's similar sense. to the um, Splinter Fang, isn't it? The Splinter Fang's double is um, oh, yeah. always oh, yeah. wound on a three, isn't it? Always hit on a three, even. Yeah. Yeah, always higher than always higher than the toughness. Yeah, thing. your opponent's toughness. Yeah, but that's that's a yeah double exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It? Similar yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah, that I, I think that's really effective. Is that? Yeah, I think it goes like well with Nurgle because you can imagine sort of it's like ignoring the armor because the poison's getting in. Yeah, or like whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think the other weakness for Nurgle is the quad. Yes, I, I agree. That's I. I don't think anyone ever will use it. No, you wouldn't. You definitely wouldn't use that. I but that's also true. due to you not moving enough. So you always probably exactly. need the quad yeah, yeah. to to do the rampage rampage. Yeah. Yes. Um, so when you get better movement out of, out of the triple maybe or something, then possibly the quad might be more useful. But still, I don't really see healing being a thing. No. I, I tried using it on my silver the other, and it didn't make any difference. They still got one shot afterwards. Yeah. Was... It's so little. Even double the ability value, that's... I mean, it can be 12. That's obviously massive, but... A quads are rare, and say it's a three-point quad, then you get six points of health. That's not a lot. That's one crit for many fighters. That's... Yes. I think I'd like to maybe... If you're going to do that role roll the amount of dice you get and then double it that would you know I mean? make for the same result yeah you get the same result but on average give it a, give it a chance to have a crit and if, and if okay. you crit you you, get... that's what you more chance of rolling a six then haven't you yeah yeah if you if you're rolling a quad six and you roll six dice you could heat you could fully heal back yeah and that yeah. Is number i mean they could just they could just, say, could just say heal four Honestly, yes. they could. Uh, but again, uh, for a quad, I think it's it's really expensive for what what it is. Yeah, and and, and I, I couldn't see anybody using that personally. No, not not when you consider you could have a free free move and free attack. Yeah. But it's, okay, guys. It's that move free, it's I think we've talked basically about all the abilities here, haven't we? Um, we've talked about yes. possible other models, maybe, and so on. So yeah. I would say let's wrap this one up here, the Nova okay, one, yeah. right? Shall we? Um, I, think, I, think we've, I think we've covered everything there. I think we've covered most of it, and it's already got quite the length. So um, I'd <laughs> say <laughs> let's hold it here, and then, uh, yeah, see you guys at the, at the next one. Thank you for watching.